Hello, historians, and welcome to On This Day in History. Because, as we all know by now, yesterday makes today and changes what happens tomorrow. So, let's take a short look at what happened today, the 21st of May. So, in 1809, there was the Battle of Aspern Essling in which uh, Napoleon was defeated by the Austrian Archduke Karl. Now, this was just one of a series of battles in the Napoleonic Wars, but by this time, the tide was beginning to turn. France had been incredibly successful under Napoleon militarily at the outset of the Napoleonic Wars from 1803. This was one of the first and significant defeats that Napoleon would take. He would, of course, go on to have some victories after this as well. But this was the first time where it became almost apparent to people that he was not invincible. Uh, in 1904, on this day, the Federation Internationale de Football Association, or FIFA, formed in Paris. This, I should point out, is one of the reasons that uh, soccer is called football in England because it was called the Football Association in Europe. England is next to Europe. They started calling it football. Before that, it had in fact been called soccer in England. It was uh, an English word after all. More on that in many other videos because I really, 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 really never let that go. Anyway, so 1908, this is the ticket you were looking for, the advertisement you said you were looking for for the first ever horror movie premiering in 1908. It is interesting that film was at the early days, at its outset in the uh, start of the 20th century. And one of the first things they thought to do was how can we terrify people, which is incredibly interesting. Movies were not just a way of recording what the world was like, but also of entertaining. And humans, no matter what, we do enjoy feeling scared as long as we know it's only temporary. Uh, in 1932, 17 hours of flight, uh, Amelia Earhart becomes the first woman to complete the transatlantic solo flight uh, ever. And in 1980, Star Wars Episode V, Empire Strikes Back, opens in cinemas. Now, this was significant not only because it was a sequel to the hugely successful original Star Wars movie, but this was when they uh, created the idea of episodes, and in particular, episode five. When Star Wars was first released, it was not called Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. It was simply called Star Wars. And when Empire Strikes Back came out, all of a sudden we saw this episode five, Empire Strikes Back, and any uh, re-releases of the original Star Wars included the title episode four. So this was the idea that there was going to be a trilogy as soon as the sequel came out. And not only that, but uh, the first suggestions of a prequel trilogy of episode one, two, and three uh, began at this time as well. So what began as one movie in 1977, by 1980 had already been uh, discussed as a six movie minimum uh, event. So let's look at the deep dive of the day. We are gonna actually look at the flight of Amelia Earhart. It, it was an incredibly significant event. Now her solo transatlantic flight, she took off on the 20th and she landed on the 21st on this day. Uh, now she managed to cross the entire Atlantic Ocean. She took off in Canada, in Newfoundland, and ended up landing in a place called London, Londonry in Ireland, usually known as Derry in Ireland. They don't like to say the London part, it's too English. Uh, and she was the first woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean. But what, in a plane, <laughs> but uh, what should be noted is the fact that only one other person at all had flown across the Atlantic, uh, which was Charles Lindbergh. So this means she was the second person ever to do it and the first woman. So this is why uh, she took off on May 20th. If you were paid attention to on this day yesterday, that is when uh, Charles Lindbergh's anniversary was in 1927. So this timing of her flight was not a coincidence. Now, it should be pointed out that this had been attempted earlier by a female aviator by the name of Ruth Nichols, but she had crashed as weather conditions on the day 
had not been favorable. Keep in mind, only one other person had uh, achieved this particular feat, Charles Lindbergh in 1927. This was incredibly difficult to do. This was not a simple matter of, oh, I'll just get in a plane and do it. It was incredibly difficult, which is what makes it significant as an achievement. So she actually came across many difficulties in her flight. So this particular account goes through uh, a few of the issues she was dealing with. So Earhart fought fatigue. She had a leaky fuel tank, a cracked manifold that spewed flames out the side of the engine cowling. Uh, this is all according to the Smithsonian Institute. Uh, ice had formed on the wings and caused an unstoppable 3,000 foot uh, descent to just above the waves. So Amelia Earhart, while she completed this flight, it was not without its issues. This is significant to note that she did not just get in a plane, uh, start the engine, press the fly button and go. It was an incredible feat and very, very dangerous. So she had actually originally uh, planned to fly to Paris, the same place that uh, Charles Lindbergh had flown to, but it was because of the weather and the mechanical problems that she ended up landing on a farm in Derry in Ireland. When she landed at this farm, uh, she reported back as saying, well, I scared most of the cows of the neighborhood and I pulled up in a farmer's backyard. So even her landing was incredibly dangerous and took a lot of skill as a pilot to figure out what to do in that emergency situation. So why was this such a big deal? Well, we've talked about the fact that uh, she was just the second person to do it. We've talked about the fact that it was incredibly dangerous and quite a feat to undertake given the technology at the time. But we also have to remember another issue that was taking place, which was some of the attitudes that existed at the time. It became a much publicized event simply because of the fact that Amelia Earhart was a woman. It was not publicized as second person ever fly solo across the Atlantic. It was always publicized as first woman. And why that was significant is demonstrated quite well, I think, in these comments. Many have said that the last great spectacular feat of this sort, which remained in aviation, would be a solitary Atlantic crossing by a woman, the Manchester Guardian wrote. So. What uh, this particular article is starting with is the idea that, well, we don't really have many boundaries to cross in aviation. Uh, once Charles Lindbergh had done it, anyone can do it. But can a woman do it? Would that be amazing? Can you imagine a woman being able to fly a plane? Oh my goodness. They went on in this article to say, without male or other assistance, but relying on her own ability as a pilot, her own skill and the extremely difficult navigation, which the Atlantic demands, she has succeeded in proving that the flight is not beyond the knowledge and capacity for sustained endurance which a woman can acquire. Yes, it was genuinely believed at the time that women were not capable of flying a plane. They just weren't capable, they couldn't do it. It was far too beyond their capacity. It didn't occur to anyone that, uh, for example, no one was actually allowing women to train as pilots um, at the time. That wouldn't make sense at all. It must be something that they just physically are not capable of doing, which is why Amelia Earhart became such a significant figure. She showed that all you had to do was give women an opportunity and they could be successful. In fact, incredibly successful. Uh, Amelia Earhart went on to do many other things. So as a result of this flight, she was actually awarded the National Geographic Society Medal by then President Hoover and also the Distinguished Flying Cross awarded by the United States Congress. She went on to form something called the 99s, the first organization of female pilots. So it was her and 98 other aviatrixes, which was a name for female pilots at the time. Uh, male pilots, of course, being called aviators. So you can't put, just call someone a pilot. They have to be a male pilot or a female pilot, right? That makes sense. Except, no, of course it doesn't. And she set other women's uh, flying records before and after her transatlantic, transatlantic flight. In fact, she became the first person, man or woman, to fly the Atlantic alone twice. So a feat that not even Charles Lindbergh himself was able to achieve. And she was also the first woman to fly nonstop across the United States, among many other records. So this is her enduring legacy. She was inspiring to many people. 
not just to women, but also to men who aspire to uh, be as skillful and as brave and as much of a trendsetter as Amelia Earhart herself. But more than anything, uh, I think these comments sum it up. Amelia Earhart symbolizes modern woman's invasion of the male world of daring action and adventure, writes author Camille Paglia. As an aviator, she broke down barriers and made the machine age her own. Dashing in man-tailored shirts, jackets, and slacks, Earhart became an icon of the rapidly evolving new woman who sought self-determination and fulfillment outside the home. Now, this is where her legacy is most important. Oftentimes, you will find that uh, when a record is set or when a record is broken, the immediate aftermath of that uh, is a lot of people start achieving amazing things. The example I like to use is the four minute mile, which was uh, broken by Roger Bannister. We've, there was a previous On This Day video on that. Please go back into the archives and check. But that had been seen as an impossibility. No one could possibly do it. And of course, once the record was set and people realized it could be done, just two weeks later, someone else broke that record. So where that relates to Amelia Earhart is what this author is talking about. Seeing uh, anyone performing these particular feats could inspire other people to do uh, similar things or go beyond these records. But more than anything else, at this time, it was genuinely thought that women were not capable of acts such as this, that adventure was not for women that breaking records was not for women. Being able to see a woman do this broke that cultural mindset. It gave people the imagination to picture something different for themselves. So in this way, Amelia Earhart actually serves a legacy beyond aviation and has changed culture as a whole. I hope that when I first mentioned Amelia Earhart's name, it seemed familiar to most of you. The reason uh, for that being is connected to this. Her enduring legacy. The fact that all you need to do is mention Amelia Earhart, and I would say nine out of ten good people will know the name, shows just how significant a figure she actually was. So I hope you have enjoyed this edition of On This Day, and I will speak to you tomorrow.